right? In this section, we're gonna talk about particles moving along curves. We're gonna be given a function, S of T, that describes a particle literally taking a roller coaster ride along a curve. S of T gives us position. If I took the derivative of S of T, I'd get velocity. If I took the absolute value of that, I'd get speed. If I took the second derivative, I'd get instantaneous acceleration at a point. Now, if you're wondering, isn't velocity and speed the same thing? Well, actually it's not. Velocity not only gives us how fast we're going, but it gives us direction as well. In other words, a negative velocity means that we could be going backwards or whatever the negative direction means. Speed is always positive. So if I'm going negative three miles an hour, I'm going three miles an hour in speed. Instantaneous velocity is how fast we're going at that moment, right at that time. So I could be speeding up, I could be slowing down. If I'm speeding up, the second derivative is going to be positive. If I'm slowing down, the second derivative is gonna be negative. I have the need, the need for speed. So that right there is an equation that gives us a position of a particle as it travels through a curve. This is the position. What I need to find is I need to find the velocity, I need to find the speed, and I need to find acceleration all at one second, okay? So, Velocity is found by taking the derivative and plugging in one. So let's do that. S prime of t is going to equal 6t squared minus 18. Okay, so if I wanna find the velocity, velocity is going to be S prime of one, because I care about one second here, that's gonna equal six times one squared minus 18. Six times one squared is six, six minus 18 is going to be negative 12. Negative 12, what was our units here? Uh, meters per second. That's my velocity, okay? Now before you're like, whoa, 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 negative 12 meters per second, you can't do that. Sure you can, if you're going backwards. Velocity gives us not only speed, but it gives us direction. If I care about speed, I'm just gonna take that same exact number, okay, but I'm gonna throw absolute values around it. So I'm gonna do the absolute value of one squared minus 18, which gives me the absolute value of negative 12, which gives me 12 meters per second. It's the same exact thing. I could just take that number and make it positive no matter what it is. If that was positive, it stays positive. If that was negative, it stays negative. So I'm traveling 12 miles an hour backwards, okay? That's what that means. To find acceleration that's instantaneous, I take the second derivative. So S double prime of T is going to be that guy right there Let's take the derivative of that, 12t minus nothing. If I wanna find the instant acceleration, instantaneous acceleration, at one second, I plug in one. I get 12 times one, which is 12. And my answer is gonna be meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Okay? So what that means, is at that moment, there's a lot of 12s, and if you're wondering, well, are they all gonna be the same number? No, this just happened that way. I'm going backwards at 12 meters per second, and at that moment, I'm accelerating at 12 meters per second, which means the previous second, I was probably not moving at all. So uh, that's what that is, all right?
right, this problem we have quite a bit to do. Uh, we are to find the, well, this again, S of T gives me the position of a particle moving at uh, feet per second. Not meters this time, it's feet per second. Part A is asking me to find the velocity and the acceleration function. The velocity function is going to be the derivative. S prime of T equals 3T squared minus 12T. That's the velocity function. The acceleration function is going to be S double prime of T, which is 6T minus 12. So that was part A. Part B is asking me to find the position, velocity, speed, and acceleration. All right, so this is the position formula. All right, that's the position formula. So position is going to be S of one, which is equal to uh, one cubed minus six one squared. One minus six times one is gonna be one minus six, which is negative five. So this guy is essentially five feet back. That's my position. My velocity has me taking that equation and plugging in one. Okay, three times one squared minus 12 times one. Three times one squared is three times one, 12 times one is 12, three minus 12 is negative nine. So I'm going at negative nine feet per second. I'm moving backwards. And that's how fast I'm moving backwards. It's a fast little particle. Speed is going to be the same exact thing, but with absolute value wrapped around it. So positive nine feet per second. And the instant ex uh, <laughs> instantaneous acceleration is going to be S double prime at one, which is going to be six times one minus 12, which is negative six feet per second squared. Okay. C. At what time or times in this case is the particle stopped. Uh, stopped means the velocity is zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run to my velocity function and I'm gonna plug in zero for my velocity. So if my velocity is zero, I can say zero equals three T squared minus 12 T. Factor out a three T. That leaves me with T minus four. Set each one equal to zero. If three T is zero, then T is zero. And if T minus four is zero, then T is four. Okay. If that smells like critical points, it's because it is. It's because it is. So the times in which I am stopped are zero seconds and four seconds. When is the particle speeding up or slowing down? The way I figure this guy out, the way I figure this guy out is I have to find when acceleration is positive, that would be speeding up, and when acceleration is negative, that would be slowing down. The way I do that is I set the acceleration function equal to zero. Now, if you're wondering, oh wow, that smells like inflection points, it's because it is. Uh, add 12, divide by six, and my inflection point is two. I bring back an old friend, 
and this is gonna be my S double prime. So if you're thinking, oh, that's like when we did concave up and concave down, it is. So I need to pick a point that's not two, that's smaller than two. I need to pick a point that's not two, that's greater than two. So zero and five seem to be pretty easy. And I need to plug that into the acceleration function. All right, why not the original? Because if I were to plug that into the original, that gives me position. I need to find out if zero, because I know it's gonna be doing one or the other on this side, one or the other. So if I plug in zero into the acceleration function, okay, uh, I'm just gonna do it in my head, you ready? If I plug in zero into the acceleration function, I get zero times t minus 12, which is negative. So that's a negative value, which means I'm slowing down. If I plug in five into the acceleration function, I get something to the effect of 30 minus 12, which means I'm speeding up because it's positive. Okay. So I can say that I am speeding up when the time is greater than two seconds. And I'm slowing down when the time is in between zero and two. I'm not gonna just put less than two because that would imply negative time and I ain't about that life. All right, E. New sheet of paper. Find the total distance traveled by the particle from time t equals zero. All right, so I made a really dumb mistake, so I have to redo part E. If you're wondering what happened to part E, the only part E is me screwing up. All right, so E says S of X equals T cubed minus six T squared. My job is to find the total distance traveled by the particle from zero to five. Let's see what this graph actually looks like. If I were to graph this, this is what my graph would look like, something like that. This means I'm a little particle and I'm going down here and then I come back up. This number right here is zero, that number right there is six, okay? And what total distance means is pretend that you're this particle and you're driving a car. What this means is you're going down, which means you're backing up the car, and then you hit this moment right here. I don't know what that moment is, but then you were like, you know what, I need to go back, and then you drive back, and then for whatever reason, you stop five seconds later, okay? Total distance means if I were to take my car, go backwards 10 feet, stop and then go forward six feet, I just traveled a total of 16 feet. So what I have to do is I have to find out how far I drove here. And if that would be 10, if this is me back in my car up 10 feet, then my answer is 10. Now I have to find out how far I drove to get here. And if that happens to be six feet, then my total distance driven is 16 feet. So that is a minimum. This point right here, the point that my particle decides to turn around is a minimum. So the way I find a minimum is do exactly what I did back here, okay? So I look at my original equation. Minimum is found by taking the derivative, which is that guy right there, and finding your critical points. So I already know what my critical points are, and I'm not gonna waste my time. Actually, no, I don't, I never did, or did I? I never did, that stinks. Yes, I did. Part C, I found my critical points. Part C, I found my critical points. My critical points were zero and four. So if my critical points were zero and four, clearly it's not gonna be zero. This particle started at zero, and you can see how it's a maximum right there, a relative maximum. It went and decided to turn around at four. So what I have to do is find out what my position was at four seconds. That will tell me how far away I am from my beginning spot. So if I take four and plug it in, I have four cubed minus six times four squared. Four cubed is 64 minus six times four squared, which is 16. 
64 minus 96 ends up being negative 32. When I did this problem before, I accidentally called that negative 22. So this guy down here is negative 32. I guess I had Taylor Swift on the mind. Because <laughs> of the song. All right, so I'm at negative 32, which means I drove backwards 32 feet. Now I'm turning around and I'm gonna drive uh, for one more second. How long do I drive after I go forward for one second? Well, let's plug in five. If I plug in five, I have five cubed minus six times five squared. Okay, five cubed is 125 minus six times 25 is going to be 125 minus 150. 125 minus 150 is minus 25. So at this moment right here, I'm at negative 25. Now, does that mean I drove 25 feet? No, that means I drove backwards 32 feet and I drove forward to where I'm 25 feet away from where I started, which means the distance from here to here is seven. So what all of this means is I drove backwards 32 feet, I drove forwards seven feet, I drove a total of 39 feet. Woo! Particles, particles, particles. I believe that's it. I believe that's it for this chapter. So let me see if I'm right. Let me see if I'm right. I'm right. So chapter four is done. Chapter three is done. At this point, you should be able to take uh, the test on chapters three and four. Okay. Bye. Bye.